Hi folks, my name is John Ward and I've been lecturer in American Literature at King since September of 2019. Having spent the last year in the English department has been incredibly enjoyable, but I've repeatedly had conversations with my colleagues and students about decolonizing work that is either happening or needs to happen both inside the university and outside of it. One of the things that I started to think about was not simply the ways in which the university and its workings can be reformed, but whether the university itself can, at least as we know it, ever really be decolonized. This is not a question to which I have a stable answer, which I don't think is necessarily a negative thing, as this is work that needs to be continually self-reflexive and mobile. One of the things that really stood out to me was not simply the texts that we might be engaging with as readers, but the ways in which this engagement takes place. So one of the key intentions of the abolitionist curriculum is to think beyond the possibilities of the university, whether this is thinking beyond modular structures or thinking more radically beyond the confines of the university itself. The abolitionist curriculum originally started life in the English Department of Kings in July of this year, arising out of a context in which questions circulating around anti-blackness, racism, colonialism and power were being asked in ever more urgent ways, and we wanted to use our collective voices and knowledges to respond in productive ways. The whole UK university sector, including King's, needs to address issues such as the Black, Asian and Minority Ethnic awarding gap, the continuing presence of PREVENT on our campuses, the need to decolonize the curriculum, the lack of people of colour, especially Black people, in permanent faculty positions and leadership positions, the level of surveillance and oppression faced by Black students and students of colour, and the urgent need to sever ties with the police. The name abolitionist curriculum is intended to evoke both the historical and ongoing struggles of resistance to, to systems of oppression and their legacies, such as the transatlantic slave trade, apartheid, and the prison industrial complex, as well as encouraging its readers to think about abolition happening in tandem with creation, creating new knowledges, new ways of thinking and being, and new methodologies. This curriculum is intended, in part, to give its readers some greater context around issues being elevated within the Black Lives Matter movement, such as colonialism, slavery and its legacies, mass incarceration, police and state brutality, the state, the cultural functions and possibilities of studying our histories, the realities of the present and the potentialities of our futures. The curriculum is also explicitly designed to exist outside of the confines of Kings as a way as as a way of abolishing some of the exclusionary practices of the university. As an English department, we want to stand together to work in solidarity towards racial liberation, whilst also critically interrogating the ways in which the university is complicit in these issues, and also asking broader questions of what the university can possibly be and what it can possibly do. Given the exclusionary nature of many structures of the university, this curriculum is intended to offer the reader the space to critically learn and reflect upon the multiplicities of blackness in a much more accessible and inclusive way than the university offers. The majority of texts on this curriculum are free to access. There is a wide variety of texts, both in terms of form and length, in order to engage with readers who have different learning styles and availability. Being housed outside of the confines of the university allows it engagement with the curriculum, which is not as fully marked by the colonialist and neo-colonialist workings of academia. This curriculum does not require entrance fee, attainment of specific qualifications, or navigation of the physical, emotional and intellectual barriers which are common to many higher education institutions. The terms text and reading are used here in more expansive ways than simply referring to reading literature. Other examples of text that can and should be consumed, analysed and interrogated or read include films, songs, physical spaces and images. Readers can choose how to engage with this curriculum in its entirety or simply through some of the constituent elements. While allowing for complexity, this curriculum is also intended to be digestible and accessible, with each reading being put into wider context and learning activities incorporated throughout. This is also a deliberately trans-historical interdisciplinary curriculum composed of a wide variety of texts, including literary, visual, sonic, corporeal and spatial resources, in order to allow for various forms of readership and engagement. Rather than being divided up temporally, this curriculum is divided into thematic blocks, such as pre-modern histories and the present, navigating intimacies and violences, poetic legacies, memory and memorialization, and containing the black body. This is in order to encourage the reader to interrogate periodization, 
with each thematic block offering the opportunity to think about the past, present and future, not as distinct, but in conversation with each other. Across the abolitionist curriculum, the reader will be encouraged to look back historically and interrogate constructions such as the archive, with a particular focus on amplifying marginalised and or hidden voices, experiences and lives. To more overtly contextualise our current cultural moment, drawing clear connections between the past, present and future, and to also think about how interrogating our histories and current configurations of lives allows us to think more expansively about what is possible, what potentiality the future can hold, and the ways in which we might help to generate this futurity. The vast majority of texts listed here are free to access for the reader, while this is a deliberate choice in order to make this curriculum more accessible, unfortunately this also means that there are limitations in terms of the text that can be included here. As a result of intending to maintain accessibility as an integral, integral concern of this curriculum, whilst also wanting to offer the reader the option of supporting creators through purchase of their work, the majority of each thematic block will be comprised of texts that are free to access, as well as including additional texts that the reader can choose to access if they are able. The abolitionist curriculum is also very deliberately designed as a way of elevating, amplifying and centering scholars, writers, creators and individuals who face anti-blackness and racism, as well as other intersecting forms of oppression, such as sexism, ableism, transphobia and homophobia. If we challenge and change what we read, see and hear, as well as learning about and participating in methodologies that challenge anti-blackness in all of its forms, this can change our ways of thinking and being. This curriculum also recognises that in its very construction lies the colonialist and neo-colonialist colonialist legacies of the university. Despite all of our attempts to unlearn and rethink these structures, as academics we carry the imprint and legacy of the format and content of our own educational histories. This is why despite these limitations, it is all the more urgent and necessary that we continue to radically reimagine the world around us. So these tensions that are inherent with the creation of the abolitionist curriculum should be engaged with. The texts included in the curriculum are not only intended to elevate, amplify and centre scholars, writers, creators and individuals who face anti-blackness and racism, but also to encourage thinking about blackness in all of its abundant variations. Rather than perpetuating the notion of blackness as monolithic and only ever attached to trauma and oppression, this curriculum celebrates the multiplicities of blackness, including black joy, black excellence, black resistance, black love and black organising. This curriculum certainly makes no claims to being exhaustive in its examination of blackness. It will also hopefully provide greater context and space for thinking about the ways in which blackness survives and thrives, appears, functions and is represented culturally, as well as encouraging the reader to consider the ways that whiteness appears, functions and is represented culturally. I want this abolitionist curriculum to raise as many questions as it answers, as the work of decolonizing is neither straightforward nor easy. The curriculum is also designed with the full knowledge that there are changes and improvements that can be made, as well as recognising the urgent importance of collaborative and non-hierarchical decolonial work. Because of this, any suggestions or additions that any readers have can be emailed to abolitionist.curriculum at gmail.com in the service of making sure that this is a constantly evolving curriculum. To hear more about the abolitionist curriculum and decolonising work, the Race Equality Network, or REN, at King's will be running an event on October 26th from 12 to 1.30, where we'll be continuing these conversations.